All right, this is the one everybody's been waiting for. This is the Goddard Caddis, and I get asked about this one a lot. Um, this is a fly I've tied since I was a little kid and had a lot of trial and error on trying to figure out how to, how to make this come out best. Um, so I'm going to show you, show you my method of doing this. Um, and it's really nothing fancy, um, but there are a few tricks for sure. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, a Tiemco 100 SP. Uh, is a SPBL, and this is a size 14. It's that super point hook. It's a little bit heavier wire than a standard dry fly hook. Um, and I like that because I'm going to pull hard on the thread to flare and spin the hair. Um, so I want something that's, uh, that's going to hold up to that, that extra pull. Uh, the fly is super buoyant, so that little bit of extra heavy wire doesn't hurt it at all. Uh, for thread, I'm going to use, uh, this is Simperfly Nano Silk. This is 18 knot, um, and I'm going to use black, although it really doesn't make any difference what color you use. It's not going to show at all, um, except for at the head, so uh, it really doesn't make any difference. Um, now, that being said, you can certainly tie this with 8 knot thread. We're not using such a big chunk of hair to, uh, uh, to need any extreme thread. Um, the thing I do like about this Nano Silk is it's very slippery, so it slides down in the hair when I go to flare the bunches. Um, so I do recommend it for uh, uh, flaring hair, especially when you're, when you're getting towards the tips, uh, which on this fly we're not. But um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start this thread just maybe just a little in front of halfway. And with Nano Silk, this is a, a gel spun thread, so it's very slippery. So you've got to kind of make an extra long jam knot. And I'm going to make a thread base all the way down to the bend and then forward again to about, you know, I'm going to say 60%, and then I'll run back again. So, so one of the big uh, myths about spinning hair is that you want um, a bare hook shank. Um, in my experience, that's the last thing you want. Uh, you do not want a bare hook shank. You want a, a dressed shank so that you've got some, some texture on the hook. Um, I'm going to let that thread flatten out a bit. And I'm going to hang the thread just about even with where the point on the barb would be. Now, as far as the deer hair goes, you can, you can do this with a lot of different stuff. This is uh, uh, what they call hopper deer these days. This is whitetail. You can see this piece is fairly light colored, but you can get it in a lot of different colors, um, even dyed colors. But the natural kind of varies from this kind of very creamy color um, to a more of a gray. But what I'm looking for, and you can see in the actual texture of the hair, um, you can see it's relatively fine. Um, but it's corrugated, and you can see those little waves in the hair. Um, that's going to tell me that this hair has a thin wall and a large inside diameter, so it's going to flare really nicely. And I'm going to start off with a big chunk of this deer hair. So I want you to kind of see what I've got there, and you kind of look at that in relation to my fingers and the, the hook shank. Um, you know, there's my scissor tips anyway, uh, to give you an idea. It's a bigger chunk of hair than you think you need um, for a couple of reasons. One, the more hair you can pack on the hook, the easier it's going to be to trim um, and the better the fly is going to float later. Um, two, we're going to, th to thin this out by pulling all that under fur out. You can see there's a bunch of under fur in there um, and I'll show you how to get that out of there. I'm going to hold this hair as close to the tips as I can and kind of fan it between my fingers and then I'm going to pull all this short under fur all those short hairs, you can see I just kind of run my finger through it. I don't typically do that up here on top of my desk because it goes everywhere. I usually do it down over my trash can until I've got that hair cleaned out. And I want all the short hairs out as well as all that under fur. Then what I'll do is I'm going to cut the tips off this clump. So I'll hold this up here where you can see it. So I've got the butt ends there. I'm going to slide my fingers down here and I'm going to cut the tips off. And again, I don't usually do this up up here because it's going to make a mess, but I'll clean that up later. So I've got the tips cut off and I've got a square cut clump there in my fingertips. Now what I'll do, now one of the catches on a, on a Goddard what people run into is they try to spin this first bunch of hair and, and really you don't want to spin it. You can't spin it because the hook bend is in the way. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to flare this chunk. Um, so the end I've got here is the tip ends of the hair. I've cut those tips off, but that's the tip ends of the hair. And I'm going to lay this in with these butt ends just a little short of the hook gap. Maybe just a touch longer, but um, I definitely don't want them you know, all the way up to the hook eye. Um, so I'm going to lay this in. I'm going to put a turn of thread all the way around, and I'll just start to tighten that, that turn of thread. And what that does is that creases the hair, so I can put the second turn right on top of it. And I want those two turns overlapped right on top of each other. Now I've got the thread on my near side. I'm going to cinch down on my, on my spool here, and I'm just going to steady pull down to flare that hair in place. 
That wasn't a yank, it wasn't a, a, a hard move, um, just a nice steady pull to flare that hair in place. So now I've got those butt ends flared up. So now what I'll do from here, without letting off the tension, is I'm going to keep working my thread forward, just one turn in front of the other, and you can see as I go, those hairs will stand up, almost up to the front of that bunch, and then I'll sweep everything back. and creep my thread just in front of there. So I just worked my thread through that bunch of hair. Now the second bunch we are going to spin because we're, we're clear of the hook point. So I'm going to take a like size bunch. Again, it's a, it's a large bunch of hair. I'm going to clean it out. And I'm going to cut it off. So I've got just the butt ends of the hair here. Um, this was the tip end. I'm going to slide my, my hair back a bit and I'm going to put the center of this bunch even with where my thread is hanging here, right at the very front of this first bunch. So I'm going to overlap those two bunches. I'm going to bring my thread up and over. And I want to make sure on this far side, try to get my finger out of the way here, I don't want to come back through this hair, uh, back this way. I want to come straight over so that I don't capture any of those hairs. I'm going to put one turn, and again, I'll crease the hair, put another turn right over the top of it, and then a third turn. Now, to spin this bunch, I'm going to try to do this with my fingers out of the way. I want to hold on to the first bunch, and really what I'm doing is supporting the hook here, and I'm going to draw the thread back toward my right side. Now, I tie left-handed, so I'm holding the thread in my left hand, and I'm going to pull toward the bend of the hook, um, but just at a slight angle. So I'm just sort of pulling back toward me, and that hair will start to spin around the hook. As that does that, I'm going to follow it with the thread, and then I'll continue to work forward through those butt ends, just one turn in front of the other to stand those up as well. Now once I've got that second bunch spun on there, what I want to do is I'll come in with my fingers at the back of the hook and at the front of the hook, and I'm going to pack that hair together. And creep that thread right up to the front edge there, and you can see I've got you know, a little bit, uh, a little bit short of half the hook left. Um, one of the things on a Goddard that I always find is I, it's very easy to crowd your, your hook. I like to have a a large hackle thorax area. Um, so really two bunches and, and kind of shoot for halfway, you know, maybe about 60%. And then I'll whip finish the thread. Pull that knot tight back up against the front and I can clip the thread out. Now, here's a super pro tip. Um, when you spin this hair and when it comes off the hide, you can see that hair um, is flattened a bit. It's because we packed it together. And this is on any hair bug, any anything that you tied a, a spun or flared hair on. Um, so Goddard Caddis, uh, bass bugs, things like that. One of the tricks um, that I've learned over the years, and I learned this from Tim England years ago, watching him tie, is he'll take the bug once you've got the hair all spun and just hold it in a pair of forceps in the steam from a steam kettle. And what that does is that puffs the hair back up. You can see the, the fly I'm holding in my fingers I've already steamed. You can see that, that hair is standing up a little bit more. It also stiffens the hair slightly. And what that does for you is it makes the hair stand up to the blade a little bit better. So when I go to trim this, it's going to hold its shape better. Um, and when I'm, when I'm done with the fly and I fish it, it's not going to change its shape because the hair's already been wetted. Um, that steam just puffs everything up. It makes everything a lot denser, tightens everything down on the hook. Um, so... Take this bug out of your vise, hold it in a pair of forceps just up here by the hook eye, tie six or eight of them, or ten or twelve, or however many you want, um, and then go start your steam kettle. And when the steam's coming out, just hold it in front. You'll see the, the bug grow. The hair will puff up. Um, makes a huge difference in the, in the ability to trim these nicely. So, that being said, I'm going to take that one out and set him aside. And we're going to use one of these ones that I've already, already steamed up. We'll just use this guy here. And I'm going to try to show you my trim process. Now, um, I know that uh, I tie left-handed, but I am really right-handed, so um, I'm going to hold this fly in my left hand here, and I'm usually, uh, you know, kind of down over my trash can again, but I'm going to try to do this where you can see it. What I've got here is half of a double-edged razor blade, um, a brand new one. Brand new one's always as, as sharp as you can get, so, um, you know, you can get a few bugs out of each one, but um, as they dull up, just go get a new one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the fly upside down, and what I'm looking for here is the hook eye there, and I'm going to trim the bottom of the fly flat. So I'm just going to make a slice straight back in along the bottom, 
And at first, when you're first doing this, you might go a little shallow just to kind of get an idea what kind of resistance you're going to get. To trim the bottom of that bug flat. Once I've got that, the bottom trimmed flat, I'll take the fly and turn it over and I'll hold it by the bend. And from here, I'm going to take my, scissor, or my uh, razor blade and I'm going to angle it up from the hook eye and slice up the top of the body. And you can see I can kind of just push the blade through that hair to make an angled cut there. So right now we've just got this wedge shape. So now I'm going to come in and knock the edges off. So I'm going to come in on my far side, and I always kind of just think of trimming a traffic cone. Um, I'm going to knock this edge off, and you can see I'm not really worried about the stuff hanging off the back yet. I'm just trimming the, the hair that's attached to the, to the hook shank. I'll do my other side here. Go a little deeper here. So there's our rough trim shape. Um, so what I did is I went across the bottom first. And then I went down each side, like so, and then straight up the back. And I can actually see here, I want to make this a little steeper. Up the back. Um, I'm going to keep trying to do this in the vise. I think I'll be able to show you what I'm doing. Um, now you can see there's a corner. You know, we've made flat edges, flat, flat sides on this. So we've got sort of a, uh, a square. And what I want to do is knock the, the edges off that shape, kind of round that out a bit. And this is where a good sharp blade really comes in handy. So I'll knock, knock that top corner off and that bottom corner. And the same thing on this near side. And generally, like I say, I hold this in my fingers when I do it, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So this may not come out perfect, but I'll cheat and show you one that I did in my fingers. figure out how to get to this edge. Here we go. So you can see I'm just knocking those edges off. So I've rounded out the shape of the fly. Now up here at the front you've always got these little stub ends that are sticking out. The easiest way to get rid of those is take your blade perpendicular to the to the hook shank and kind of cut in just like you do the face of a bass bug. And if you didn't know that, now you know that. Glue in the face of a bass bug so it's flat is cheating. Um, there's a way to, to trim it, and again, I learned that from Tim England as well um, by cutting it flat there. And don't worry too much about getting that perfectly clean because we're going to overlap that when we get, get up to our hackle. All right, so we're doing pretty good there. And you can take all day to trim these things. You know, I have to sort of stop myself from going crazy with them. Um, it's been an entirely too long. Um, I will tell you, if you sit down and, and spin up a bunch of them and then steam them and sit down and trim all of them in a row, um, you get a lot better at it. You know, it's, it's breaking down any fly like that where you're doing each step in a row. Uh, certainly makes the process a lot easier. So now that I've got the, the initial part of the, of the hair on the hook trimmed to shape, for the back end, what I'll do is I take and I pinch this so that my, the radius of my thumb, let me turn that over, is along that hair. And I'll take my scissors here and I just cut along the radius of my thumb, just did an arc there, put that back in the vise, to get that initial shape. And then I can use my scissor tips. This hair at the back is longer, so the blade won't cut it as well because it's looser. Um, and again, that's one of the reasons that we steam the hair, is to pack it down tight so it stands up well to the blade. <laughs> There's our our general shape there. We're doing pretty good. Knock that back edge off. And I'd, I'd call that done. Um, one of the problems with this camera is it shows just every little piece. It'll drive me nuts, make me want to keep going back over and over and over to do this. But we're going to call that good. So you can see it's just sort of a tent shape. Um, and it's, it is fairly wide across the top. I don't like to narrow these out too much. It, uh, uh, I don't like to take too much of the hair off the hook. The whole idea of this fly is that it's very buoyant um, and it's a great skater. So, Okay, once we've got that body all trimmed up, I'm going to come in with the same 18-knot 
nano silk. Um, although you could certainly switch to 14 knot Vivas or uh, uh, your regular 8 knot thread here for the hackle portion, no problem. Um, but I've got this in my bobbin, so I'm going to start it here just up behind the eye, and I'm going to run right back to the front edge of the body. And I'll trim my little tag end out of there. And at this point, I'm going to tie in my hackle. Now, the hackle I'm using here, this is a, a rusty done saddle feather that I've dyed. Um, but, you know, brown is, is sort of traditional. Um, but really, sort of up to you. You can use lighter colored hackle if you've got lighter colored caddis for sure. But I'm going to strip a, a fairly long section of bare stem at the base of this feather. And I'm going to tie it in here behind the hook eye and wrap back over it right up to the front edge of the body. And then I'm going to come up into the body. So see where that turn is going is right at the, the front edge of the deer hair there. And I'll actually cinch the hackle down into the deer hair. Now the reason for that is, is I want to run the abdomen and thorax together. I want to kind of jam them together. So I'm going to make sure that I can get everything overlapped together. Um, and to do that, I'm going to bring that, that last couple turns of thread right up in the right up into the front edge of the wing. Now, one thing that I've been doing on my goddards lately um, is dubbing the thorax. And what it does is it's going to help to kind of even out um, the diameter of the hook, the arbor diameter of the hook between the wing and the, and the thorax. Um, I really don't like the pinch down look where the wing ends and then the hackle starts. Um, I like to have a more of a square edge there. So what I've got here is some uh, Nature Spirit Emergence Dubbing. Um, and this is in peacock green, but again, I've, I've played with a bunch of different colors on this as well. So it's really sort of up to you. Match it to, match it to the color of your critters. Um, so I'm going to take a little pinch of this, and I'm going to twist it on as tightly as I can. And this is a fairly coarse dubbing. Um, I've done this with Superfine also, um, but I kind of like the shaggy look of the of the emergence dubbing as that underbody. Um, I've also done it with straight real peacock, um, and I'll tell you it's uh, it's a trick to really get that wrapped in there tightly. There's just not much room to do it, so I think the dubbing's a little better option. It also builds up that shape a little bit more uh, uh, genuinely, where peacock looks like it's fat, but it's really not. Um, so I'm just going to put that on there very thin. I'm going to start this dubbing up here behind the hook eye, and I don't want to crowd. So I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room, and I'm going to work back up into that dubbing, up to where I tied that feather in. I'll tighten my dubbing down again. And I want to square the front edge of that thorax off a bit. Um, this is a lot like what you do on a stimulator, so that you don't have a taper there coming down toward the front. So we've got a pretty blocky thorax. Now I'm going to take my hackle feather and I'm going to turn him so the outside of the feather, the pretty side, is facing to the front. I'm going to start that first turn of hackle right there in the deer hair and then I'm going to come up over the dubbing and I'm going to plumber these wraps again like you would on a on a stimulator right up to the hook eye and I'll tie that off behind the eye. Make sure I get that cinch down good and tight. I'll get my fine tip scissors here. I'm going to come in and trim that feather out. I can kind of just sweep everything back and get a few turns in there for the thread head. And then I'll come in and whip finish. Now I do like to put a little shot of head cement on these. Um, you know, anything with this GSP thread is so slick. Um, so I'm just going to take a little shot of just regular conventional head cement and let that run in. And I'm just using the the pin in my applicator bottle to do this so I don't goop it up everywhere. And there's our, our finished Goddard. Um, got a couple little crazy ones sticking out here and there. Um, again, you know, try not to go crazy over it. You can, you can use a dubbing brush and kind of pick some of that dubbing out a little bit as well. Um, makes kind of a cool effect. We'll kind of sweep back in there. Like so. And there's our, our finished Goddard Caddis. You know, like I say, you can spend all day trimming that one down another millimeter and uh, getting the general shape that you're that you're after. But um, that's the, the Goddard that uh, that I'm fishing these days. Um, this is a really a cool fly. It's a little challenging. Um, and you know, honestly, as far as uh, these things go. Um, this is a great fly to learn to spin spin hair on because you can uh, you know tie up a body and spin it and uh, and trim it and if you don't like it 
slice it all off there with your razor blade and do it again um, or do you know a bunch of bodies in a row um, over and over again so that you've got plenty of practice to do them and uh, uh, kind of work the process out um, but that's a basic flare and a basic spin on on that uh, that little caddis. Uh, you'll notice it doesn't have antennas. The reason I don't put antennas on there, um, I used to, and every time I tie the fly on it, one of those antennae would get caught in the uh, in the tippet knot, and I'd cut it off, and the fly fished fine without it. So I just skipped putting the antennas on altogether these days. Um, this is kind of my my go-to version now. Um, but that's the Goddard. I uh, I hope you enjoy that. That's always a fun one. I like to uh, sit down and tie those on a Sunday. Today just happens to be Easter Sunday. It's snowing like crazy outside, but caddis aren't far away. Um, I hope you enjoy that one, and if you have questions, you know, you know where to find me. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll be back. Take care.